I've hesitated to share this story for a long time because I know how important the mutual trust between a resident and their landlord slash maintenance staff is, and I don't want to instill any unnecessary distrust in anyone's landlord. I've shared stories before about dangerous and scary residents I encountered while working at apartment complexes, but this is a story about my time on the other side of things as a renter. Before I had even graduated from high school, I knew I wanted to live at Paradise Apartments. I was a bit naive at the time drawn and by the many amenities I would never use, but I primarily wanted to live there because the complex was pet friendly and within my small budget. When the time eventually came for me to get my own place, I sublet the only apartment they had available and moved in. Unfortunately, I came to realize the apartment wasn't as nice as I'd originally thought it was. The building was old but remodeled, so it had all the typical plumbing issues and thin walls. I also learned it was not the safest part of town. I was primarily an online student, but I had one class that met in person twice a week around 8 a.m. I'm a bit of a homebody, so I rarely left during the day, except for that class, the occasional shopping excursion, or to spend time with my boyfriend in the evening after he got off work. My apartment was a bit of a Bermuda Triangle even though it was only 600 square feet. And I lived alone, things had a way of growing legs and walking away. I had two kittens at the time and blamed them regularly for things disappearing. Something odd that kept reoccurring, however, was that I'd find my underwear box out and sitting in the center of my bedroom floor on days when I had class. I didn't have a proper dresser, instead using an Ikea shelf with some Ikea boxes for designated clothes, socks, underwear, pants, pajamas. I always could have sworn I'd put the underwear box away after getting ready for class, but I chalked it up to me forgetting as a result of having to get up early and being focused on getting to class on time. Arguably paranoid, I started to think that some of my laundry was disappearing as well, as favorite articles of clothing would go into the laundry hamper and seemingly never come back with the cleaned clothes. Towards the end of that semester, I was working one evening on a homework assignment when my boyfriend called to let me know his roommate had accidentally locked him out of their apartment. I had a key to their place, so he asked if I could run over real quick to let him in. Before I left, I made a mental note that I had left literally every light in my apartment on. Because I was living on a pretty tight budget, I normally made a point of turning off all the lights when I left. But my boyfriend only lived about 5 minutes away, so I knew I'd be there and back very quickly. Sure enough, I got back less than 15 minutes later. I immediately sensed something was off, as I could see the lights were off through the blinds. I called my boyfriend, and he drove over to meet me. We unlocked the door and went in. All the lights were off in my apartment. Thinking maybe I'd had a power outage, I flipped on the main light, and it came on. My boyfriend checked the entire apartment, no one was inside, but someone had gone through and systematically turned off every light at their switch, including my lizard's basking light, the only light I always left on, because it was on a timer, and my laptop, which I'd left open on my assignment, but now the computer had been powered down and closed. We called the emergency maintenance number, and I explained that someone had been inside my apartment and that they had to have used a key because there was no sign of forced entry. The manager called me back and told me I had to be imagining things maybe I had forgotten that I had turned off the lights before I left. I assured him that I wouldn't have turned off the computer or the lizard light someone had been in my apartment. I told him I was extremely worried because obviously this person had a key to get in either they worked for the complex or maybe it was a previous tenant or guest. I asked if they had changed the locks after the previous tenant moved out, and they assured me they changed the locks after every move out. The manager suggested maybe it was a friend pranking me someone else I had given a key. The only other people I had given keys were my boyfriend his key to my apartment had been locked inside his apartment on the same key ring as his own apartment key, and my mom she lived 3 hours away. In any case, neither of them would have pranked me in this way. The manager finally agreed to send someone out immediately to change the lock for my peace of mind. I brought up my concern that it was someone on the staff since they would be the only other people with keys. The manager claimed the keys were locked in a special safe that required a personalized code to track who took what keys 
and went in an office with a security camera. They changed my locks, but I had my doubts that it would do much good. As far as I was aware, there were only two maintenance men that worked at the complex one nice. Older man that didn't seem all that skilled, and a younger guy with a scruffy beard that gave me a bad feeling. I suspected he had to be the one that had come in. When I had first moved in, the manager had told me I would be getting a new kitchen counter within the first three days. I waited to move in my kitchen stuff, but after a week they hadn't come, and then after a few months I had completely forgotten about it. One day I was sitting in my living room and this scruffy maintenance guy walked in without knocking or announcing himself, and I hadn't received a notice to expect him. He said he was there to replace my countertop. It took him two days to install one small piece of counter. A few weeks later, I was getting out of the shower and heard a single knock at the door. I called out, just one minute, and hurried to get some clothes. Not two seconds later, the door started to open and I had to slam it shut still wrapped in a towel to stop him from coming in. He claimed he hadn't heard me call out, but I had my doubts. I don't remember what made up excuse he had for coming in. Another time I found a note from him that he had come in again, and didn't give a reason as to why, but that he'd made certain not to let my cats out. He also made a note about my third cat being cute, except I didn't have a third cat. I did however have a picture of my childhood cat in my bedroom on the Ikea shelf where I kept my clothes. At that point I went to the office to ask them to make a note in my file that I wanted at least 24 hours notice before entry going forward and I wanted to always be present for future entry. Now that I knew without a shadow of a doubt that someone was coming in secretly, it all made sense. It hadn't been long after the surprise maintenance visit stopped that things had started moving around in my apartment. He was also on site all the time everyone on staff also lived at Paradise so he would know when I came and went, who knew how many times he had snuck in, how many small souvenirs he had stolen. He could have been coming in while I was asleep. After the night with the lights, I put my own lock on the door, but still didn't totally trust the apartment. I ended up buying a condo shortly after with help from my parents, subleased the apartment, and moved. Right around that time, I also got my first job working in a different apartment complex. In the final days, before I left, my mom came into town to help me move my stuff. While she was home alone, I was at a class she caught the scruffy maintenance man trying to get his key to work in my lock. She demanded to know what he was doing, and he said he was there to paint the front door. I hadn't received a notice, and he didn't have any paint or supplies. She told him he could wait until after I had moved out. A few years later, I was shopped by the owner of Paradise Apartments while working at another complex in town. Okay Apartments Shopping is when an employee from one apartment complex takes a tour at another apartment complex under the guise of wanting an apartment for the purpose of gaining information they might not otherwise easily give up. It can also be performed by your own management company to make sure you're doing a good job. There were certain tells a shopper always gave, like asking specifically worded questions, is it safe here? I'm a felon. Can I live here? That required specifically worded answers, and were easy to trip up on, being too wealthy for the complex Rolex watch, sports car, nice suit, and being too flexible on what they were interested in they were interested in all the layouts and were open to move in whenever. This guy seemed too old and too well off to be randomly considering an apartment at OK we were geared towards lower income folks. While I was giving the tour, he asked if I had any opinions on other apartment complexes in town and mentioned Paradise specifically. Normally I wouldn't badmouth any other complexes I preferred to win them over by showing them the positives of our community. But I told him that I probably wasn't the best person to answer that question because I was probably the only person to give Paradise a bad review in the last five years. He asked me to elaborate and I told him my apartment had been broken into and I suspected it was someone on their maintenance staff. At that point, he revealed that he was the owner of Paradise and that he was very disturbed to hear I'd had this experience. He asked me to describe the maintenance man in detail. I assured him it was in the past and I was over it, but he insisted on calling the manager over at Paradise still the same guy to ask him over speakerphone if they had had any issues with the maintenance staff back in the year I had lived there. 
He answered yes. There had been a scruffy young maintenance man he'd had to fire because he'd been caught multiple times breaking into the apartments of single women. Satisfied, the owner proudly told me the issue had been resolved and asked if I would be willing to change my review. I told him no none of this had changed the fact I'd experienced this and actually validated what I had suspected. In the years I worked as a leasing agent, I learned a lot about where complexes will cut corners to save time and money. From my experience, a lot of complexes did not switch out the locks if the tenant was good, and a lot did not require background checks for employees even though they did require them for tenants. Keys also got passed out willy-nilly to vendors and maintenance during turns, and employees frequently got master keys that would open all doors. I won't go so far as to say every complex operates this way, but every complex I worked at was doing this when I started there. Because of my own experiences, once I began managing a complex, I enforced strict rules about changing locks, tracking keys, posting proper notices, and requiring background checks for all employees and tenants. At least here in Florida, with Mia's law going into effect this year, background checks for employees and security measures for keys are required for all complexes. Even still, if you're renting an apartment, stay diligent. If you have reason to believe someone is coming into your home, document it and let the staff, police, family, friends know. You never know who might have a key to your apartment. This isn't the first paranormal encounter I've had, but it is only the second time someone was with me when something strange and inexplicable happened. We moved into the new house we're currently living in October of last year. I should mention, the house we came from also had its share of really creepy happenings. And there is one event that I feel is connected to what happened in the new house. I was home alone with my dog, reading on my bed. My parents at the time were remodeling their bathroom and had met with the man who would be doing the job at the home improvement store down the block to look at tiles. Now, this whole encounter is quick and over in a matter of seconds if I'm going to be honest with you. But even now, years later, I struggle to get out with shaky hands on my keyboard. Before I get on with it, I just want to say I was in near silence meaning no music was playing. No TV, my laptop was off and charging, I was not on my phone, no headphones in. Basically, I wasn't doing anything that would cause a noise, and seeing as I was home alone, the only source of a human voice would have been me. The only sound that could be heard was the sound of the AC. So, I was on my bed reading, my dog was downstairs, presumably napping since he was like 12 years old at the time. He's still kicking, he's 17, and has a heart condition that causes him to get tired easily. All of a sudden, I hear my mom's voice, greeting the dog like she always does when she comes home, and I mean exactly the way she does, switching between English and Spanish. The same tone, everything. I stood up and stretched, but realized I hadn't heard the door open so I approached the stairs, and very confusedly called out to my mom. Silence, and then, my dog started screaming. I mean screaming as if he was being tortured, crying and whining, and I started calling out to him, scared out of my mind. I took the first step of the stairs down, and immediately froze. Something felt so, so very wrong. I was flushed with this fear. I knew without a doubt that whatever greeted my dog was not my mom. Whatever it was, it literally froze me with fear. My dog finally came running up, zoomed right past me, into my room, headed into my bathroom and hid behind the toilet. Mind you, through tears and shaky hands, I did call my mom. I practically blew her phone up, but all I got was her voicemail. That was the first time something like that had happened to me, and I knew I couldn't just explain it off and shelve it in the back of my mind. Later, when my mom got home and I told both my parents what happened, they brushed it off and thought I was just imagining things. The second time is actually what I'm writing this post on. It happened in November of last year, but in between moving and settling in, finding a new job, my grandmother's declining health, and how scared my mom was now has been the only time I've gotten to keep calm and tell the story of my second encounter with what I now refer to as the Mimic. This new house we moved to was built literally a month before we moved in, the neighborhood still under construction. My mom and I were sitting in the family room giving each other pedicures. My stepfather had gone out with my grandfather to run some errands. We were watching something on Netflix, 
When we both heard my stepdad come in through the front door, my mom called out to him. Redacted, are you okay? To which we both heard him respond, Yeah, honey, I'm good. We heard him open the garage door and go in. Obviously thought nothing of it. 20 minutes pass and we both nearly jump out of our skins when my grandfather opens the backyard door in the family room, peeks his head in and asks us to open the garage when we had a chance so they could unload the groceries. My mom and I look at each other again, confused as it seems to be an ongoing theme and she tells him isn't it open. Redacted just came in. We both look at each other and she starts calling out to him but my grandfather cuts her off and tells her that's impossible because my stepdad was out back. We go out to look in there, getting out of his car to not confuse anyone. We have a huge, I mean huge backyard, fenced in, and my parents are in the midst of fixing up the backyard of this new house so my grandfather had gone to the improvement store to pick up some supplies and cement blocks to stand the BBQ on. That's why they had brought the car to the back, was my stepdad. I look at my mom to see she has the same petrified look on her face. My stepdad still getting out of the car not looking at us goes. Sorry guys I left the house key by accident. Can you open the garage door so we can unload the groceries? Second fridge and garage. Six people in one home guys. My mom takes off inside with me trailing behind her and lo. And behold the lock on the front door was still on and the garage door was still locked as well. Guys, I can't even explain how terrifying that was for my mom, and I we don't speak of it. That day my parents fought for hours, my mom thinking it was my stepdad playing some kind of prank on her but that clearly was not the case. Later that night, when my mom was alone I approached her and I asked what she thought about what happened. My mom looked at me very sharply, looked me dead in the eye and said, don't ever talk about this again. Don't. I didn't think to connect the two experiences till now. Since then, I have not encountered the mimic.